Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is going to be another trying to fix video. Another video where I've bought something faulty off eBay and I'm going to do my best to fix it. Now in here there should be two faulty cordless vacuum cleaners, you know the handheld ones that you can use for your car and stuff. So uh, I actually do want to get one of these working because it would be useful for me when I'm hoovering out my car because to save like dragging out the hoover and plugging in the electric supply and everything, I'd be able to just use one of these. Now retail wise, I've seen these go for over £100, I've had a good look around, I can't seem to find them cheaper for £85. Now I managed to get them both for, I made an offer of £11 each plus postage, so they've come in at just under £30, so that works out as £15 each delivered to me. So I'm hoping that I might be able to get one of them working out of two. So if I can get one working for £30, then that's going to be uh, quite, a, quite a good saving. Now the seller had loads of these listed for sale and I bought two and the reason I bought two is because I don't know much about these and I thought it would be a lot easier to fix one if I had the parts from two to put together. Obviously if the same fault is on both of them then I'm going to be stuck. But if they're different faults, so for example, maybe if the motor's gone in one and maybe the casing's cracked on the other, then hopefully I can swap it about to get one working one. Now, as with all these videos, I'm not an expert in this. I've never taken uh, this particular brand apart before. I've never even owned a cordless vacuum cleaner before. So what you see in this video is just for entertainment. Do not copy it. It might be the wrong advice. I might be doing it something that's not safe. I'm probably not going to be doing it correctly. This is just for entertainment, just to see how I go about fault finding and stuff, and I'll do my best to fix it. Now let me show you the eBay listing. So this was purchased from eBay, and you can see here it says Russell Hobbs 2.22.2 volt lithium cordless handheld stick faulty. And if you have a look up here, let me just show you where it says the offer that I placed. Uh, right, there we go. So it says here that uh, the seller accepted my offer off 22 pounds that's sterling and uh, that was for two of them so that was 11 pound each and let me just quickly show you the listing all right so if you have a look there he's still got them for sale now there's seven available two sold so obviously there's there's loads more and uh, it just says good condition boxed with all the bits including charger use units either don't work or don't click together properly it would be nice if it was just a case that they were put together wrong sold as parts only so uh, the very fact that they're boxed and stuff I'm hoping that these might be like a customer return so for example they got them might have used it for a week and it went faulty or maybe didn't use it at all maybe they tried to put together didn't go together the way they thought because maybe they didn't read the instructions and it got sent to straight back maybe this eBay seller hasn't actually gone to any bother of taking taking it apart and seeing what's wrong. Maybe he's just got in nine of them and he wants to offload them as quick as possible. So that's what this video is going to be about. So first of all, let's just separate them from each other. And let's take a look inside. Right, okay, so this is the main bit here. I'm hoping there's gonna be a battery. Yes, there's a battery, fantastic. Okay, so it's definitely had a bit of wear, so it's not just been you know, put together wrong. So I don't know whether there's any charge on that or not. Hoping the charge is in here. Yes, okay. Right, and I mean I haven't put them together, but obviously that's for the floor. That's so you can go upright, and this is what I want to use it for. Just put that nozzle on the end, and hopefully then I'll be able to clean out my car and stuff with this uh, with this here. Obviously I have to read up about how this all works. Right, okay, so there are the contacts there. Contact onto here, and that powers the motor. Right, well, I mean, it does all look pretty clean. It doesn't look like it's had months and months of abuse. So, uh, 
Yeah, okay, that's that one. Let's open up the other one. We also have what looks like some instructions down here. Yeah, it's there. Right, let's open up this one, see if we have similar things in this one. Okay, this definitely has had more use. I can see that it hasn't been cleaned out. But you know, that's, uh, I think that's supposed to be dust. I'm not sure if that's a filter. That, oh no, maybe it's a filter. But that's definitely dust on it. Uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it means the seller hasn't really put much time into this at all, which is, which is good. So again, it's got the battery. Uh, the upright bit, that one down. I mean, it all seems, I haven't, I need to look in the instructions to make sure that this is what comes with it. I'm not sure if that was in the other one or not. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's all pretty good. So what I'm going to do is, before I get started on this, I'm just going to get the instructions just to sort of read up a little bit about it because I haven't got a clue how these work. Uh, and then we'll uh, put the batteries on, see what happens, and possibly I'll have to maybe charge it up for, you know, quite a few hours before anything happens. Right, so I'll come back to this in a few minutes. Right, okay, so I've been looking through the instructions and it all seems just very simple, very uh, as you would expect it to be. So, what I have noticed is though, it's a good job I bought two of them because in this one here, I can't find the little power supply. So in this one we have that little power supply here and that plugs into this bit here. So that's how we charge it up. But on the one on the left hand side, I can't find this. So it's just as well I bought two of them because otherwise I'd be stuck because unless it's printed on there what the power supply is, it's going to be a bit of a pain in the backside to have to go and get a power supply for that. So uh, not a problem here because obviously I've got one that can just charge them both, uh, you know, when that one's flat I can just charge this one up. So before I go any further with this, I really want to clean it out because it's absolutely filthy and I'm getting dust everywhere and I don't really want to be breathing this in because I don't know what it's been used for before. So I'm going to get my working hoover and I'm going to hoover up the faulty hoovers to get them nice and clean. And then we'll put it together and see what's happening. Okay, so I've got my trusty Henrietta hoover and uh, let's clean it up. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's just start one at a time and then see if we can find out what the faults are and see if they work or not. Right, so we've got our unit here with the battery. Right, okay, well, that does appear to be... Definitely appears to be spinning. Right. Surely it couldn't have been as easy as it was put on the wrong way around like that. Just have a look at the other one. No, okay, that's been put on the right way. Right, okay, that was probably me. Let's uh, see how this fits on here. That fits on there like that. It's definitely stuck in there. Definitely picked up the bit of uh, paper that was in the box there. Well, first impressions are that that is working. Maybe uh, maybe the problem is with the charging, but then again, it's got power. You think if the problem was with the charging, then it would have been uh, 
you know, it would have been flat because the customer would have used it up until it went flat. And this maybe not, maybe they just tried charging it and then it didn't charge. Right, let's plug it in. There we go, it's coming up with a flashing indicator. So that says to me that it is going to charge. Right, okay, let's put that one to one side for the moment and let's try, let's try the other one. Obviously I haven't tested all the attachments, but definitely first impressions are that that appears to be working. So, this might be one of those really lucky videos where uh, it all gets fixed up really easy. Right, let's try this one. Now remember, this was the one with the uh, AC power. But you could get one of those adapters relatively cheaply anyway. Let's have a look. Uh, output is 26 volts at 0.45 amps, uh, 450 milliamps. So I'm sure it'll be easy enough to get one of them. Let's plug this one in. Okay. Yeah, that appears to be working. Let's just plug in the charger. Fine. I mean, this one is in very good condition. Remember, with customer returns, it could be just a case of the customer didn't like it. They might have, you know, they might have thought it was too noisy, wasn't powerful enough. They might have been used to a Dyson one, which possibly could be better quality. Uh... Yeah, I mean, it appears to be working. There's not a huge amount of suction on it, but then you're not going to expect miracles out of a handheld device. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, initial testing, obviously I haven't hoovered up any dust or anything yet. I can't see there being a problem because it all seems to be pretty tight. You know, it doesn't seem that there's air flying out everywhere, so I don't think the dust is going to get sucked up and then go out into the room. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check now to see if the attachments and stuff work. And I think that might be it. I'll see if this one, uh, you know, maybe charge both of them up, make sure that they do come to an end. I presume that light goes goes out or maybe solid red when it's done. So let's have a quick look here. So there we go, it says uh, the charging indicator light on the handheld vacuum will illuminate red flashing in two second interval to show that the unit is charging. A full first time charge should be given a five hours. Once charged, the indicator light will illuminate solid red. So that all seems normal. One thing that is weird, it says here, lift the assembled cleaner onto the charging dock, ensuring that, and then it comes on with that. But it also says here, plug the charging cable into the adapter socket on the side of the handheld unit. So maybe different models come with a dock. Uh, I can't see any dock in here, but uh, it all looks to be good. So I'm gonna muck around with it now. Put it, uh, you know, put the bits together, see if it is working. Give them both a clean up, and then I'll show you at the end of the video if I have actually found anything wrong with these. Okay, so I've been giving everything a good clean up, and it's good news. It's in really good condition, but I have found one fault. Now, if you have a look at the top here, this is where you attach, for example, this unit onto it here. This should be spring loaded. If you have a look, you can see. It's not. So when you go to engage it, you physically have to press it down. While on this one here, if you look at this one, you can see it's spring-loaded and there's a lot of strength in that spring there. So I know why this one's been returned because then when you go to plug it in, what happens is, let me just uh, try to do this one-handed. There, right. So it should just clip in like that, but it doesn't. You have to force it down, yeah? So it's still usable, 
but there's a chance then when you're kind of mucking around that you might just tap it and you can see how easy it's going to fall out. So on a new product you would be annoyed and that would definitely be a reason that you would take it back to the store because it should operate like this one here. Right, I was struggling with that and I've just found the other fault. Right, if you have a look there, can you see there should be two of these prongs here and there's only one. So if you have a look here, you've got one prong and the other one snapped off. So that's the reason that this one was taken back. So this one was returned because of a faulty catch here. This one was returned because it's broken here. So when you go to line it up, it's slightly harder. So for example now, if I line it up there, you can see I have to get one in one side and one in the other side. So it's a little bit harder to line up, but it's still more usable. And then when it is lined up, you can see that it goes well together. So you have to undo it like that and then push it together and it just clips into place. So that's the reason that one was returned. Now this one I might be able to fix because if you have a look in the box, there is actually a spring. So I presume that this spring is the one that goes inside here. So what I'm now going to try to do is try to somehow take this out so I can get the spring back in because that spring must house just in this bit here. So when you press down on it, you're pressing down on the spring which forces it back up. So that's what I'm going to work on now. The unit is still currently on charge. I'm hoping the charging is going to be okay but that's going to take quite a few hours before that light goes out. So let's try, try and see if we can fix this. But as far as everything else is concerned, it all goes together correctly. Some parts have never been used, such as this one here. And I think this one here has never been used. So uh, also the brush there has never been used. So they don't look like they've had a lot of wear. Right, let's see if we can fix this. Okay, so what I'm gonna try and do is, I'm gonna to try to lever this bit out, because if you have a look, all the other things are sprung loaded, so I'm gonna to try to lever this out to get the spring back in. I can't see any way of doing it without taking this out. I'm kind of wondering how the spring managed to pop out anyway. It must have, uh, I don't know, this must have popped out, and then it must have maybe got knocked with a lot of force to take it out, and maybe the uh, original owner of this just clipped this back in without putting the spring in. So what I'm gonna do is, you can see that there's two tiny little bits here that looks like it will allow me to compress it in, because there's little spindles, it's very hard to see, but if you look in there very closely, I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick that up or not. But basically there is a little axle in there that goes across. So you can see obviously that's how it pivots here. So that's what I'm gonna do, get a screwdriver, press these two bits in and I'm hoping this will fall out. And then I'll be able to line up the spring and push it back in. Let me get some screwdrivers. There we go. Right, okay, so you can see now we've got a little pivot thing there and a pivot one here as well. And they're also shaped, so they're like chamfered. Can you see it goes down there? So it's gonna go in easy, but once it's in, it's gonna be hard to come out. So it goes in, you know, goes in like that. And then when it goes in easy over the ramp, it locks into place because it can't come back out again. So hopefully, it's just gonna be a case of lining that up. That's for the spring there and uh, pushing it back down. There we go, it's easy as that. And that's in position now. So now if we get the same one again, line it up and it clips into place, perfect. There we go. Happy with that, but there's no way of me fixing this here because I haven't got the, the uh, you know, if I had the old part. In fact, I'll have a look in the box just to see, but I didn't see it. This is going to be in someone's house somewhere, and it would have just been thrown away. But uh, you can see the difference between this one here, which is perfect, and this one here. But it's really not a problem. I mean, yes, it makes it slightly harder to line up, but now that you know it's broken, all you've got to do is make sure you line it up with the left channel, like so. So it's going to be. Uh, it's not really a hardship, and remember, you only have to undo this when it comes to cleaning it out.
Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how much it costs to get an adapter because remember we're an adapter short. Okay, so I've had a quick little look on eBay and Amazon and you can get them. They're actually quite expensive, but uh, well, they're not expensive, but in relation to the fact that I paid £15 for each one of these, then to pay like £13 for the adapter is quite expensive. But if you have a look here, you can see that this one here is... Uh, 26.1 volts and it's 0.78 amps and remember with the amps this is only going to draw what it needs so as long as the charger can supply at least 0.45 amps like it says uh, here 450 milliamps there you go so remember this is only ever going to ask for a maximum of 450 milliamps which is 0.45 so it's not a problem that the charger can output 0.45 seven whatever that is 0.78 amps that's absolutely fine because the charger can output more than this needs this isn't going to blow up this because this is only going to ask for 0.45 amps and uh, as well as that you've got to make sure the polarity is correct so if you have a look very closely down the bottom can you see wait till it focuses in it says minus on the outside so it's like a c and positive on the middle pin so basically what that means is that the inner pin in there will be positive and this outer bit here will be negative. So you need to make sure again on the actual item that that is what it is. And if you have a look here, you can see that minus is on the outside bit, that looks like a C, and positive is on this inner bit there. So you know that's gonna be absolutely fine. So uh, weird thing is on this particular one, all the stickers and stuff have been taken off. So if I can't remember which one came with the charger and which one didn't, but let's say now if this one didn't come with the charger, then you're going to have to go online to try and find a specification of it to work out what charge you need. Obviously, if this one came without the charger, then it's absolutely fine because you can just read what it needs down here and it will tell you 26 volts at 450 milliamps and it tells you the polarity, so that's fine. So you can see why it was much better for me to buy two of them rather than just one because then it gives you much more options to be able to fix it so if i wanted to get this particular one here this one was uh let me just see the price of this right so it's kind of listed for dyson so they probably all use a very similar setup there you go 26 volt ac adapter charger for dyson and at the moment they're offering this for 12.99 so 13 pounds so even if you were to include 13 pounds onto the 15 pound it brings it up to 28 pound which is still not bad for a device that looks to be you know working pretty well so right so let's do a quick test on this and then also in the car as well so you can see i've got the long attachment here and just like those cheesy adverts i've done really easy to hoover up things on a kitchen floor so i mean it has to be able to do this otherwise it's just going to be rubbish now this was the dust that actually came out of one of the ones uh, you know the one of the ones that i emptied out earlier so let's turn this on and see how it works <laughs> Okay, so uh, not the best advert because you can see that when it comes to bigger clumps it just seems to uh, you know, mat up on it rather than actually hoover it up, but it did get it. And then to empty it out, remember I said that, it's, uh, you know, that it was a bit hard to fit, but it's not really an issue because to empty it out, all you have to do is press this little switch here and then it all falls out. So you can just tip it into the bin again and away you go. So you don't have to be keep on taking it on and off. So it's, uh, it's easy enough. Right, okay, now I'm going to take the other one out to the car and we'll see how that one performs. Okay, so we've got the smaller handheld one now and this is the one that realistically is going to get used because I don't really get the point of these are using them in the house because there's power sockets anywhere so it's not exactly a big deal to plug in a decent hoover because you're never, in my opinion, going to get a great clean on this. In fact, look at that. It looks like it's uh, come loose again. Oh, look at that. It's popped out. So maybe this spring here is not the best. In fact, looking at it there, you can see it looks like it's been bent in. So I'm wondering whether 
This is the one with the break on it, isn't it? I think what's happened is that this has had a drop and then it's broken that and at the same time it's popped off that top bit. So I suppose it's been dropped from a height and that's forced it off. So this is going to be a little bit difficult to fix now. I mean, I can pop it back in again, but uh, I didn't do anything there apart from lean it down and the weight of this just made it come apart. So I think realistically this one is going to be a bit troublesome. Again, again, it's not a problem for me because I've got this one here and realistically I'm not going to go out and spend I think 12 or whatever it was, £13 for the charger because, uh, you know, to set it on because I don't really think it's worth it, especially when this one's broken. So, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, well, I'm quite happy now that I know that the background of this was probably because it was dropped. Mind you, it appears to be okay now. Maybe just in use. Let me give it there you go. Yeah, it's gone again. So, uh, unless I was to get a new catch, I think this one would probably be better just to use for kind of uh, spares. Remember, I can still use this and I can still use all the attachments. I can still use the filter. It's just this catch here, which is faulty. Unless I was very gentle with it. Or what I could do is, remember, I can just sellotape it up because you can actually leave this one on here because you can just empty the thing out to there. It's just going to be a case of when you come to change this top bit here. Let me see if I can put the catch back on and see if I can change that top bit without undoing it. So I'm just going to put it back on again. Right, so let's say if I was to glue it now, could I take this bit off? No, it has to come off there. So you can see that's the reason why. But you only have to do that. You can empty it. It's only when it comes to clean the filter. And I'm not sure how often you would have to clean the filter. So it is usable, you know, but it's not, uh, it's not ideal. But like I said, as long as I have one of them working for £30, in my opinion, it's still worth it because then I've still got all the attachments in case this bottom one ever goes faulty or, uh, you know, just get the battery or whatever. You know, it's handy to have two of them to use as spares for uh, you know the battery or if you wanted a longer clean you could charge up both of them and then have two batteries because I think they only last 25 minutes anyway. Anyway okay so I'm kind of happy now that I know because I was wondering how that fell apart. Well now I know it got dropped, popped off and if you have a look at the stress marks on there on the inside you know now that that's going to keep coming off. I could probably if I really wanted to maybe put some plastic bar or something in between them to spread them out just a little bit more because what's happened is because they're weakened a bit they're popping out quite easily while if you were to spread them out a bit or even put a little tiny bit of wood or something across there that would probably be enough just to keep it apart but for me I'm not going to get that involved with this one here. Right let's try this one in the car. Okay we're now in a car let's see how this thing behaves itself. <laughs> So there we go, how does it work? It works as well as I expected it to work. You can see that the, uh, it's actually picked up a fair bit. Uh, obviously it's not gonna be as powerful as uh, a Hoover that you're gonna plug into the AC outlet because I presume that they've just got much more wattage on them so they're much more powerful. But this is easy, especially if it's raining or something. I don't wanna drag out a power cord across the front garden. So it's ideal for stuff like this. You can see in here now. 
you know, let's say the dust in there, let me just whack it into sixth gear. Right, if you have a look now, so put the brush back on here. Sorry, this is awkward because I'm doing it one-handed, that's why it is actually performing better than it looks like it is. And, uh, Go. So it's uh, it's all right. Am I happy paying thirty pound for it? Yes, obviously it's a nice, easy fix. There wasn't really much, uh, as far as I could see, there wasn't really much wrong with them at all. So uh, yeah, in my opinion, this one would definitely get used. Would I buy them again? Had I known that they were like they were? Yeah, definitely. I think they're worth it. Would I pay over £100 for one? In my opinion, definitely not. But this is not a review of the Hoover. This is just purely a fix-it video. And as you can see in this one, buying it from eBay, I don't really think that the seller probably tested them at all. I think he just got them in and just wanted rid of them as quick as could be. So if you're after a handheld vacuum cleaner, in this instance, I think it was well worth the while. So hopefully you like this video, hopefully uh, uh, you'll give it a thumbs up if you did. Please subscribe for more how-to video and also fix-it videos as well. So that's it, take care, bye now.